Both the sport of basketball and the state of Minnesota lost an important piece of their respective fabrics over the weekend with the passing of Flip Saunders, who died Sunday just over two months after Saunders told the world he was undergoing treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma. Saunders, just 60 years old at the time of his death, was best known nationally for his work as an NBA head coach. But those of a certain age in the Twin Cities also remember him as a really good college player at the U. Gophers went 24-3 during his senior season of 1976-77. Saunders would then return to Minnesota as an assistant coach for five years in the early to mid-80s. Chad Hartman spent 16 years with the Minnesota Timberwolves, 11 of those 16 with Flip Saunders, still hosts a popular radio show on WCCO in the Twin Cities and joins us now on the phone. Chad, we showed Tom Izzo's statement, which he issued on Sunday. I understand you had both Coach Izzo and Kevin McHale on your show today. What was their reaction to the passing of Flip Saunders? Well, both were fantastic communicators, as always. Um, they, they both told funny stories, and they grew, both grew very emotional times. I mean, you lose somebody who, I, I think at both times in their lives, both could say Flip may have been their closest friend. I'll, I'll start with Kevin first. Te Kevin told a great story how he came down from Hibbing, northern Minnesota, flew down. Kevin's still a terrible flyer, and met Flip right away and never saw Williams Arena, never saw campus. They went out state, went fishing, drank beers, and just struck up this great relationship and stayed great friends all along. I think some people forget because that team ended up going on probation, but the 1977 Gophers, before the probation kicked in, they were 24-3. and three. They ended up playing the Marquette team, which won Al McGuire's championship team and just destroyed them. And probably talent-wise, we're the best team in the country. Kevin McHale would be, you know, Hall of Famer. Michael Thompson the next year would be the number one overall pick. And at the end, Kevin grew very emotional because when Kevin fired Flip in Minnesota, they, they had a falling out for a long time. And Kevin lost one of his daughters a couple of years ago way too soon, and Flip reached out to him. But it, it never completely got back to where it was. And at the end, Kevin talked about how he just thought at some point he tied it back together and said we'd end up back in a boat again. And at some point, he said, I'd look over and tell you I loved you. And he, and he never had that chance. And it was, it was touching here and that. Tom Izzo told the story how we, when he was a college player, he played that same team. And their whole goal was that they weren't going to give up 100 points. <laughs> and they didn't give up 100 points. And somehow out of that, him and Flip became friends. That even when Tom briefly was in Tulsa, he had contacted Flip. Flip joined him in Tulsa. They were on the same staff for two days, but that's when Judd brought Tom back to be his top assistant. So they never were on the same staff, but they stayed in contact all along. He talked in depth how he came very close to leaving Michigan State and taking this job here. He said it's, he's had a number of wonderful opportunities, and so many people think of you know, the Cavaliers job before LeBron left, but it was the relationship he had with Flip. And he talked about all the late-night phone calls they would have. And Tom was just laughing, saying how much he was going to miss those phone calls. So, you know, two great Big Ten Hall of Famers sharing their thoughts and what Flip meant to, meant to them. Chad, can you try to put into words for me what Flip meant to the state of Minnesota? Well, that's, that's, that's the toughest question of all, because here's a kid who was born in the Cleveland area, and, and while he didn't have a star-laden college career, we do have to remember this. He was the Ohio solid player he was and how he would have scored a lot more if he played elsewhere. But he had a chance to start up a, a junior college program that was dead, had nothing going on, and within half a season they were winning. He was at the University of Minnesota when they had success. He then came back here when the Timberwolves franchise was the laughing stock, And when him and Kevin showed the guts to draft KG, 
And I think people forget at the time in 1995, it wasn't commonplace to take Kobe, to take LeBron, to take these other guys, and to take Kevin at fifth and have the run of success allowed it to happen. And then, you know, when, when Kevin made the very difficult decision to fire his closest friend, even then when he had success in Detroit and had a tumultuous time, which was beyond his control in Washington, he kept his home here. And so he lived here in the off season, so he's still a part of the fabric of town. And so to have him come back, to have him get back-to-back -back number one overall picks, to be the owner of the team, to be the president of the team, to be the coach, and then to have all this at 60, it just it is just that reminder of life and a plan that the, the two just don't work all the time. Because even when he's had this remarkable, magnificent career, I, I really think he was set up to have maybe the best 5, 10, 15 years of his life, and all that was, was taken away from him over the last couple months. Chad Hartman of WCCO in the Twin Cities helping us remember the life of Flip Saunders. Chad, truly appreciate your time today. Absolutely, anytime. I always love watching Big Ten Network.